Okay, this is um, uh, this is going to be part seven, and again, just sharing experiences, you know, that uh, that I have uh, survived. Okay, uh, being you know stalked, being targeted, and um, this. Um, let me see where to start. Okay, I um, like I said, I graduated with the BFA, and um, and so. My while my my emphasis is painting, I um, right now because of like you know just working and everything, I do a lot more drawing, you know, and I'm really I really enjoy comics. I love graphic novels. I love uh, superhero comics. I love detective comics. I love editorial comics. Um, I just love. I mean, I, it's it's something that I really love. I enjoy it. I enjoy. Um, creating them, I love reading them, and just seeing just the different, you know, styles and approaches. It's something that I really like. I like to, I still try to draw, you know, portraits, you know, whenever I can, but I don't do it as much, um, because that one feels, that's almost like more of a painting thing for me. It's really weird, but one of the things that I've had to deal with is um, these people stalking me and stealing my work, and that's something that I dealt with um, while I was um, in school. Like I said, I was um, uh, in um, I was, uh, when I was at the, uh, the JC, what I learned to do was, you know, in the art departments, they usually, you know, um, at least the ones that, that I went to, they would have like these, um, all, all along one wall, they would have like different slots and everyone got a slot and in the, you know, it was about maybe like, you know, yay, yay wide, but it could be like, you know, like this big and in there you would put your work, you would put your canvases, you know, any, you know, large pieces of paper or whatever. But, you know, my experience was that, you know, my work would get stolen out of there. So, you know, I didn't do that. I didn't put my work there. And even after, you know, um, I, the, one of the first uh, units that I moved into, um, I can remember one time it was, um, I had, it was a shared bathroom facility. The bathroom was like down the hall and I had been just, you know, um, I was, this is where I was finally, I was just starting to learn how to paint. So what I would do was I was working at a movie theater and um, I, you know, made an arrangement with uh, one of the managers where um, the, the boxes that like the, 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 the popcorn cups and the soda cups came in, they would let me take them home because I would break them down and, you know, break them down into four, six, eight small, you know, pieces. And I would put gesso on them and then, you know, I would paint on them. And so, um, and I was using acrylics. And so that for me, that worked out really good for me because um, it was, you know, really cheap. And I, and I wasn't intimidated because I don't know if anyone's ever, you know, any of you who might watch these who are into, you know, painting, it's like, it can be really intimidating. You know what I mean? And especially when you've got this canvas and canvases are expensive. And so that just adds to the pressure of you want to do it right. Cause you don't want to ruin the canvas. You don't want to waste that money that you just spent. Well, you know, this was a popcorn box, you know, this was a, this was a box that was used to hold, to hold soda cups, you know? So it really, there was no real like commitment to it. But I can remember I was um, in this unit and I was at home one night and I was just like just sort of it. But it was like one of the flaps, you know, like a box has the flap that you close. So it couldn't have been no more than this big. And I think I'd even cut that in half. So it was like really small. And I had, you know, been painting, I painted something. OK, and this is the thing. Back then I was so I had um, I had really fallen, you know, away from, you know, my relationship with the Most High. I was, you know, like I said, I was trying to, like, deal with this by um, thinking that if I had crystals or if I was using, you know, um, sage and smudging myself with sage and, you know, just stuff like that, okay? And so I had, you know, I again, it was a shared bathroom facility. I, I put the, the piece of cardboard down. I went out, went to the bathroom, came back, and it was gone. They had come up in my unit and taken it. I would deal with that all the time. And that brings me to why I am, another reason why I'm doing this ministry is because I've had, I mean, like I said, that last time after I graduated and they, the building, the building that I was in, which was part of a transitional housing program, the owners had, um, you know, I, I put it, I showed it in the other video. They had declared bankruptcy bankruptcy so they were shutting down the building and they were basically going to try to evict everybody um we fought it we had a lawsuit but in the interim you know i still had to go into a shelter until everything got resolved and in that shelter um i got my i had a little um like a little 
what's a who's it and i had a bunch of like flash drives you know in it that had some of my you know like just like drawings and such and some of my stories because i also like to write i uh, you know i write praises to the most high i write short stories i write you know um i mean i just I, you know i just have a lot of stuff so i stole them just like that and then the, then what they did that was really just like <sighs> what they did was they took it from my bed area and then when they did what they needed to do they then turned it in to the front desk you know basically gave it back and i can remember being so upset devastated angry just overwhelmed um just just everything i mean it was just it was a really that was like really hard to deal with because you know it's like you know this was my work this is what i was doing and you're going to you know steal from me and try to reap some type of a reward from something that's not even yours now um you know i've dealt with stealing before you know what i mean because i remember being so poor where you know shoplifting i used to do that you know i'm not proud of it but it's something that you know that i have done in the past i can remember being in you know studying art and not having any money trying to trying to live on financial aid okay and be in a shelter you know and when that financial aid didn't come through you know having to wait having to wait having to wait um and um having to go into you know you know and steal tubes of paint you know what i'm saying i mean again i'm not proud of it and it was something that people were able to use against me you know what i'm saying so i'm sure there's i'm sure depending on who sees this video it would, wouldn't surprise me if someone gets you know sneaky enough you know one of these you know cray crays who was still stalking me to put up in there you know you reap what you do you know blah 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 well okay yeah so be it at the same time stealing a snickers bar okay because you're hungry is one thing it's wrong and it shouldn't be done but stealing the snickers bar and putting my name on it and saying this is Zipporah's bar that's a whole different ball game okay that's not the same thing okay but these things you know that that i dealt with you know and so even though you know like i said i have you know returned to the most high i have repented i know that i've been forgiven i know that i'm washed you know in the blood of the lamb i know that he keeps me under the shadow of his wings i know that i'm not ever going to leave the shadow of his wings okay but i'm still dealing with these people these people are still out here they're still stalking me so when like i said when sharing these experiences i'm not sharing things that happened to me 15 20 years ago when i was a young whippersnapper and you know now things are great no this stuff is still going on and so one of the reasons i'm doing this ministry and I'm going to, like I said, I've got a few other playlists that I'm going to do. And uh, some of them is going to be sharing some of the editorial cartoons that I've, that I've done. Sharing some of the different, you know, comic strips that I've done is because, you know, my work has been stolen. And chances are, depending on when you see these, okay, maybe you'll see them someplace else. And you'll know that if you're seeing some of, if you're seeing like an editorial cartoon on one of my playlists, and then you see it somewhere else, maybe even in print, okay, and it's under a different name, you know that's one of that's one of Zipporah's stalkers. Somehow her editorial cartoon ended up in this fool's possession. And how did he get that? You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm having to do this is because I've had my work stolen so much and these people are, are probably profiting off of it. And you know, they've been doing so and it just really it's really frustrating and it's annoying. And now I have just an inkling, just an inkling of how the Most High must have felt, okay, when those fallen Malachim, when those fallen angels came down and began to corrupt his creation. An inkling of how he must feel about Satan trying to pretend to be like him. What does it say in Isaiah 14? How the devil said that he, or Lucifer said that he would, you know, ascend to the sides of the north, that he would, that he wanted to be, he wanted to be as Elohim. He wanted to be like Elohim. 
okay how i i i kind of have an idea just 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 a, a smidgen smidgen teeny 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 idea of how he must feel okay when you do the work you do you know the footwork and then somebody comes along and because of their wicked connections and their wicked covenants that they've made they're able to get access to your studio or to your apartment and come in while you're at the store or while you're working or whatever and just come through and take your creative work and claim it as their own okay um so that's um that again that's um one of the reasons that i'm going to you know put this out here put these um these pieces out here um let's see the other thing that i wanted to share is again you know just dealing with um with sleep deprivation. Um, I mean, look, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, you know, but I do have these, these, these bags, these dark bags under my eyes. That's what that's a result of. Okay. No, Zephora does not sleep like a baby every night. Okay. No, sorry. It's not like that. I'm still, I still deal with the sleep deprivation, but you know, a lot of that has, um, some of it, some of it. Okay. On some days it eases up. And um, one of the things that I do, which I'm going to pass along to you because somebody passed it along to me. And that's one of the things that you can do is um, you can get, um, if you can get copies, uh, audio, if you can get audio recordings of the Bible and put them on at night while you sleep, one of the things that it does is, um, again, like I said, I'm going to keep emphasizing this. And, you know, until, you know, maybe you, who, some of you who hear this, that you really start to investigate it and think about this. The words of the Most High in the realm of the spirit, this is a sword. Okay. This is a sword. Okay. And I'm going to share with you a few scriptures to see if this will even, you know, make sense. If, if you can... Uh, comprehend what it is that I'm saying and hopefully I'll say it in a way that makes sense but um one of the things that we know is that the most high created he's the creator he's the almighty creator he created the realm of the spirits he created the physical realm all of these evil entities all of these 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 evil entities that make up the, the, the realm of darkness they were originally created by the most high they fell they were kicked out they rebelled, okay? That's why, and that they are the enemy in this war. They are the enemy of the children of light. They are the enemies of the children of the Most High. They are the enemies of the followers and the believers of the Messiah, okay? But they were originally, okay, they were originally create. they were in the kingdom, but they fell out. They got kicked out, okay? But uh, one of the things, regardless of what, position they're in now, regardless of what they're doing now, one of the things that is a, 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 a universal law, okay, that you can take to the bank, okay, that you can hang your hat on, is that all, in the realm of the spirit, all spirits, okay, which in the scriptures they're called, you know, in English they call them, they, they have them done as angels, okay, but again, the Hebrew word is malakim, or angels, depending on which word you want to use. They all have to comply to the word, okay? They are all affected by it, okay? And I, like I said before, you can test that out. You can take it to the bank. And this is one, look, this is in Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Most High. Ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. His word, they have to hearken to it. They have to, okay? The voice, my voice, your voice, they have to hearken to it. They have to. So like I said in previous videos, when you are dealing with some of these gang stalkers, these people who, these perpetrators who are doing things, you know, if they come at you with, you know, trying to like get you in a place of fear, they come at you trying to put a hate vibe on you, they're disturbing your sleep at night, okay? Recite scriptures, put the audio recording of the scriptures on, they will flee, 
Okay, it says right here, again, let me just read it this last part one time, that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word. So when they come at you and they start, you know, giving you start feeling that fear, okay, literally memorize verses. You can whisper those verses. You can simply think them loudly in your head, okay? They will hear and they will comply. When they're coming at you with fear and you say to them, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. They, you, you will sense, you will notice a shift, a change, a lessening, okay? It won't be as intense. So then if it comes back again, you say another one. Um, the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And again, you will sense, you will you it, it will lessen uh, then you can say another one um what's another one um hebrews 13 chapter 6. um let's see if i got that one. hebrews 13 chapter 6 um the most high is my helper therefore therefore i will not fear what men will do let me see if i don't think that i think the, the therefore is probably not in there but let's um let's turn to it and make sure i said it right i think i got it right okay the Most High is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Okay, learn some scriptures. Okay, that's something that you can do. Get audio recordings of the scriptures and put them on. You know, at a, you know, at a nice mellow level. Don't blast them because you do want. You're trying to go to sleep, but just put it on. You know, and then just, 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 just lay there and rest. Okay, L lay there and rest. They don't like it. When you recite scriptures, these wicked people that are really, truly committed to that, they don't like that. OK. And when you stand firm, what, what's another one in the book of uh, James chapter was it chapter one, verse four or chapter four, verse one, um, resist the devil and he will flee. OK. And one of the ways you can resist the devil and make the devil flee is by reciting verses. By reciting verses from the scriptures, they will they will leave because they don't, they don't like that. Okay, but something else that I wanted to um that I wanted to point out to um to, pre to pretty much yeah chapter four verse um chapter four verse seven resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, so resist. So something else that I wanted to point out, and that is that in order for this to truly work, in order for this to truly work. Keeping the commandments, living a righteous life, that helps this work. Okay, this is not going to work for just anybody. If you're out robbing cars and vandalizing and trying to fight fire with fire and doing wickedness to them and then think that you're going to be able to pick up the scriptures and recite a, a verse and it's going to work for you, it's not. Okay, you have to be complying. You have to be living a righteous life and then it will work for you. But there's more that I want to say about that, but I'm going to do that in another video. Um, but um, yeah, so I think, okay, this is part seven. Maybe there's going to be a part eight. Okay, shalom.